Just a joke. Um, <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a thing down here. We have a, it's a small Filipino boy. We have him in the back naked and we snort coke off him. And uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, we, we have acts who haven't been down here before. Just, well, at least wait for him to be shit before you fuck off. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We have actually just come down and do a short set. This guy's been here once or twice before. Please give it up. Just do the short set. Mr. G, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. How are you guys doing? You all right? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck's that? Tsunami part two. Hi, my name's Mr. G, and I'm basically here because I don't have an Edinburgh show. All right? <laughs> But I figured I'd be down here, you know, keep it real, keep it grimy, keep it gutter. Actually, I'm just scared of going to Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> we got any Scottish people here? Yay. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I'm going to break ranks with you, right? I'm going to break ranks with you, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the code, okay? People south of the border, we're scared of Scottish people, man. Right? Not scared because of, like, Braveheart or, or the kilts or anything like that, right? We're scared because you can do shit that we can't do. You can put salt in your porridge and eat it, man. We can't do stuff like that, you know? I refuse to fight any man that's put salt in his porridge. Because that man's been angry since breakfast time, you know what I mean? Hey, hey. Maybe say, yo, bro, calm down, bro. Just calm down. Cal cal bro, calm down. Bro, look, here's a sugar cube, right? Just put it in your porridge and we'll work it out. Hey, you fucking lucky, like you fucking lucky, like yeah? <laughs> yeah? Ah, wow, man. I'll, I'll tell you, yeah, I'm doing this like little open spot here, man. I'm real, like, you know, glad to be here at the comedy store, man. Comedy, whoa, we're celebrating 30 years of laughter, 1979 to 2009. Is it me, or does that look like it's something you see on a gravestone of a dead rapper, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a pleasure to be here, because, you know, you know, Friday night, man, Friday night at the comedy store, man, yeah, big deal for me, you know? You, you know, we got, like, loads of people out here, you know, some people just come just from work, some people are... Like, some people are here with their partners, you know, we've got loads of couples here, you know, might have some husbands, some wives, some girlfriends, some boyfriends, you know. Gay straight by, what, a hen party? Stag do! Okay, who's a desperate one in the hen party? And who's a desperate one in the stag do? And we'll just clean out the toilets for the next half hour, you know what I mean? But aside from your hen parties and your stag dudes, right, there's always like one group I feel that are just like, they're not really represented when you come out to the comedy nights. And those are the people who are here with their partners who, they know they're going to be dumping soon. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't just go out with your missus, you know you just can't take the shit anymore. Yeah? For some people, this is like the last tango in zone one. Because you ain't wasting that oyster card no more, man. And you know what I really find funny? What I find funny, right, is that like, you're sitting there and you know you're going to dump her, but she don't know it yet, man. Yeah? Right? And I figure you've probably known for quite a while. I reckon you even knew way back in February that you were going to dump her. Yeah? Right? <laughs> but you just couldn't resist the certainty of a Valentine's Day blowjob, you know what I mean? Yeah? I reckon I'd say back in February, like, you know, you're sitting there, you know, you had like a, like a table lit dinner, you know what I mean, like candlelight and everything. You bought her uh, flowers and chocolates. You're singing little songs to make her happy. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. <laughs> but now a couple of months have changed, man, you know what I mean? And like, she treats the Valentine's blowjob like it's swine flu, you know? Like, <laughs> Catch it, bin it, kill it, you know? <laughs> Now the song's changed now, ain't it, fellas, man, you know? Now you just look at her and just be, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. Catch it, bin it, kill it. You know, I actually feel sorry for the sperm that don't make it, man. Anyone else do that? You know? Because I remember, I almost didn't make it myself, you know what I mean? I had to tie the one sucker's tails together, you know what I mean, just to get through, man. And I always wonder, like, how does a sperm feel when it first reaches, like, the wall of a condom? That must be fucking heartbreaking, man. <laughs> like, you'd be so close to your final destination, but you just can't reach it, man. And what's worse is that you can see it, man. You'd be like... 
It's right there, son. It's right fucking there. Sperm's only got one goal in life, you know what I mean, right? Sperm is just, you know, just like, you know, get to the egg, get to the egg, get to the egg. Sperm's got no work problems. Sperm's got no money problems. Sperm's not going to call in sick because of a train strike, you know what I mean? Think about it, there's probably more drive and determination in your average working wank than there is in your average working week, yeah? That's why I think being stuck in a condom is the worst thing for a sperm. Because let's say you found yourself like down someone's throat or up someone's arsehole you may be lost but at least there's the hope you can find your way home can you imagine like say two lost sperm just like just just swimming around right just be like it's not look right to me son I think we made the wrong turn in somewhere. <laughs> Check the sat nav. Hmm, according to the sat nav, it says that ovaries are nearby. Hmm. You know, I think if we make a left turn past that chunk of sweet corn, we'll be all right. <laughs> As you can see, I'm going for the Lenny Henry crowd. I think Lenny Henry gets a bad rap, you know, right? I know like, like a lot of comedians like they'll come up there and say, oh, Lenny Henry, Lenny Henry, right? Oh, you know, if it wasn't for comic relief, right? He'd be out of a job. Think about it. If you were offered a job that was dependent on war, famine, and suffering in Africa, wouldn't you take it? That's job security for life, man, trust me. As long as they make bullets, your checks are always gonna clear, you know what I mean, you know? And trust me, for those of you who don't know, right, I used to write poems on the Russell Brand show. I know what it's like to see your P45 be broadcast on YouTube, man. Uh, who was the person that didn't vote for Barack? <laughs> I'm, I have to admit, right, me, to be honest with you, I'll be really blatantly honest with you, right, I never believed he was going to win. I never believed I'd ever live to see the day that there was a black president. I thought it'd soon be a black Milky Bar kid, you know? <laughs> Trust me, I applied, man. <laughs> but like, you know, like a, like a, like a black president, just think, like, the idea of like a black guy in the White House that ain't pushing a broom, fucking hell, man, that's deep for me. You know? <laughs> but when I say he's black, I should really say that he's mixed race, like, so he's like half white and half black. So I guess he was like, white enough to get the job, but black enough to just be worried about getting fired, yeah? <laughs> Cause there's one thing we're good at, is getting shot, man. Keeps the alb sales up. Makes the plot of the wire interesting, yeah? <laughs> ah, man. Man, this is like a, oh, thanks very much, man. Stag do, sort her out, yeah? <laughs> she's walking like she's in season, yeah? <laughs> Well, I'm wishing that I went to Scotland now, right? <laughs> but now this is like a classy do. This is like a classy do. And um, like, uh, the reason why I know this is because the way in which you respond to instructions. Like when the guy says to you, turn off your mobile phones, you know, you go, hmm, my mobile phone, oh, turn it off. Right? Enjoy the show. I play at some joints, right, where you tell someone to turn off their mobile phone, you're liable to get shot. <laughs> People just be like, nah, bro, man, I can't be turning that phone off, you know, bro. I've topped up too much on it, man. If it rings, it fucking rings, man. You know what I mean? Yeah? Do we have any pay-as-you-go people here? Yeah, keep it real, man. Keep it real, man. I love fucking pay-as-you-go people, man. Pay-as-you-go people are fucking honest, man. You know? Trust me, you know? A pay-as-you-go person is a person who's got the audacity to say to the phone company, look, I want the phone. I just don't have the fucking money. <laughs> Now, we can go through the bullshit of filling out this direct debit form and going through my accounts, right? But come the end of the month where you're rummaging around my papers looking for your dough, one of us is in for a disappointment and it ain't going to be me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mr. G. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> Give it out one more time, Mr. G.